so here's my here's my issue with live streaming, Ray, is that like I, I need to be I need to be like done up. Right? I'm very self conscious about my appearance. Look at look at my shitty hair and these stupid glasses I wear. Okay. I need I need to 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 to, to, to shower and like gel my hair, put my makeup on, keep my contacts in, and all that stuff. I gotta smell good. So I don't I gotta it'll happen. Maybe maybe we'll switch to the weekends, man. Maybe we'll start recording on Friday, releasing on Sunday or some shit. We can. I mean, really, whatever. I, I don't. Yeah. I usually don't have too many plans. I mean, we normally do Thursdays, right? I don't. I don't have too many plans Thursday or Friday nights. Um, oh, here, here. yeah, stuff comes up here or there. <clears throat> this episode brought to you. Oh, fuck. This episode brought to you by Traffic by Boston. That's right. If you want to be late for your commitments, go to Boston and get stuck in traffic. We do it every day, five days a week, sometimes six. Look out for those Red Sox games. Boston traffic. We're here for you. <laughs> nice. That was good, right? Mm-hmm. That's all I ever hoped and dreamed it would ever be. <laughs> that's that's why we're oh, recording on a Friday. Yeah. Yes. On a Friday. So, so we can so we can bring the heat. Bring bring the fire, baby. Do you okay, before we get too far, do you want it uh me wait, hold on. Let me see the show notes. You want me to start the show? I like I like how you for, I was first of all I was pissed off as you touched my for, show notes, but then I'm like, you know what, that makes sense. Well, I started doing that only because it got so cluttered that I wasn't quite sure what was what, and I wanted to. I didn't move anything, like move, move anything. I just like had the little hitters there. That's all. Hmm. I don't know if that helps. If not, we can change it. No, no, it's good. He's uh, good. He's good. All right, we got. Wait, let's say fucking fired up, bro. California stuff. <clears throat> so, um. <clears throat> So I'll give you my, my quick one. So I had to drive down to through the bay this morning, right? I had to wake up at like a little after three in the morning. That's not fun. And I had to drive hell fucking far away. So as I was driving, I was, you know, just spend, spend a little time listening to some podcasts, listen to us, listen to you and Huel back in the day. And, uh, as uh, reminding myself of that time we were going to like run across Connecticut or something like that, that kind of deal. And, and was like, man, Connecticut is small, huh? And I was like, you know, I'm driving pretty far today. I wonder how far I'm driving. So I did the math. I was driving 167 miles each way. Well, you want to know what's <laughs> how far that is? <laughs> that's that's more than the perimeter of Connecticut. The entire perimeter. It's like I drove all the way around Connecticut plus about seven miles. In one Such a stupid mouth. 167 miles is not the perimeter of Connecticut. It's 230. No, 228 is Connecticut. So I went there and back. So I went 234. You telling me the border of Connecticut is 238 miles? All, all one, two, 200, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All, all eleven sides. This says Connecticut has a boundary length of 328 miles and a shoreline of 253 miles. Oh, okay. All right, the shoreline's different then. Yeah, but I went three. The it's wait, what did I say? Yeah, so the boundary is three twenty eight. I went three thirty four. Right? Yeah. I don't know. I went Ray sixty seven times two. God, you're making me do weird oh, math shit. like before a show. I'm so mad at you right now. Oh, that's not. Yeah, I went three thirty four, and you're only three twenty five, three twenty eight. So I went a little bit further than the entire circumference. Of your it's state. not a circumference, Ray. There's 11 goddamn sides of Connecticut, you stupid ass. A circumference is for circles. Come There's on. There's two sides, the inside and the outside. Get your shit together, Ray. Get your shit together. <laughs> and I went around the whole outside of Connecticut, essentially, oh. in one day. Are you ready? Yeah, I was born ready. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 69 of the Rich Dickman Show, the podcast that is slightly better than mediocre. I am your host, I am Rem. Let me catch my breath, let me clear my throat. Let me spill my heart till there's nothing left, Ray. It's going to be good, it's going to be good tonight. <laughs> but I just gave you away, baby, I just gave you away. Hey Ray, that's Ray, it's hey. 69, it's not that sexy this week, but it'll be fun. Let's do it. Hey Ray, what's up? What's going on? My math was wrong because I woke up at three in the morning. 
There's your explanation. Oh, all right. So if you say so. <laughs> yes. Fucking liar. You, you join us for the pre-show, everybody, where Ray does weird math with Miles. Terrible math. Yeah, but that's right. It, it, it adds up. Yeah. All right. So here we are. Episode 69. We did the sexy episode last week because you know what, Ray? I learned something from Ryan Johnson in The Last Jedi. I'm going to subvert your expectations. That's right. You think you're going to come see the Rich Dickman show at episode 69? You're going to get all bunch of bunch of lewdness and nudeness and all sorts of good stuff. But no, nope. Uh, actually, uh, there is no liquor on tonight's show, and we are doing this straight. And actually, we just have a whole bunch of like political news to read tonight. So. That's me subverting your goddamn <laughs> expectations. That's right. We're going straight edge tonight. Straight no edge. jokes. Yes. The Not Rem Dickman one. Straight Edge Society. Look up Straight Edge Society on, on YouTube, right? Okay. Let me let me do this. Uh first of all, we are the Rich Dickman Show. All right. You can check us out at richdickman.com for all your Rich Dickman needs. If you'd like to email the show, it's richdickmanshow at gmail.com. Find us on Twitter at richdickmanshow. And please call the Dickman line, 860-316-4776. Go ahead, leave us a voicemail. Maybe have some thoughts of last week's episode, episode 68, that I titled Three or Four Jacks. If you listen to the episode, you know why. And I would like to thank, once again, the Priority Society. Eros and Isis for coming on the show with us last week. It was a wonderful show. One of my favorites that we've ever done. Some of my favorite, actually, probably my favorite guests. No offense, everybody else. No offense. Matt, Dylan, and everybody. But um, <laughs> you can't beat a couple of hot-ass swingers. You know what I'm saying? So check them out, PriorySociety.com, and their podcast, The Priory Society. But thanks again, Eros and Isis. Much appreciated. And that is basically our fastest downloaded episode ever, Ray. So it was, it was really good to see. So if you're here again... If you're thinking this is a sexy episode, I just subverted your expectations. And welcome to the Rich Dickman Show. Ray, what's going on with you, pal? I am trying to sexy it up. I'm not wearing any pants. so Or sleeves. Yeah, no pants yes, or, or sleeves. sleeves. You should see Sun's this guy. Out, guns shit. out, guns yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Good times. So, well, I was, I, you have the good stuff. We were, uh, we, we spent all week. Well, okay, I'll give you my quick rundown of the week. It was, it was crazy. Fucking crazy. So, obviously, I had the baby last week, and the night before we had the baby, uh, my nine-year-old broke her thumb. So, you know, anyway. <laughs> so, have the baby last week, get through that week, come come Monday, right? We have checkup for the baby, um, appointments for, you know, my nine-year-old with her, uh, what is it, checkup for the thumb. Then my younger, the Stella has like a UTI issue. It, like Jesus I've literally Christ. been in and out of the doctor all week is, is all I'm getting at. Literally all week. You break, man. Jesus Christ. I even had an appointment today at 3.30 for Stella. And then tomorrow she goes to the dentist at 9 in the morning. Like I can't escape going to the doctor. If they're a medical professional in the area, in the greater Sacramento area, I've visited them this week. You know what you um, need? You, you need <laughs> a break. A break, a hooker, or an Asian massage parlor. You need one of those three. I'll take all three. I Probably will take all three. At least two. Simultaneously. Yeah. yeah. So the highlight was yesterday. Went to the doctor for little baby Oliver. Now, apparently, it's best to wait a week before you do this procedure. If you know it's a procedure commonly, very, very commonly done for uh, males, where they go in and they uh, they do a little trimming of the penis. It's called a circumcision, and Ray. Yes. So they wait a week. As, you? My kid was done like a, like the second day after he was born. Doctor went and snipped that shit off, man. Fuck for well, that's what, Okay, that's what we were thinking we would do. And yeah. then apparently they were like, "Well, if you wait a week, it's easier. The baby doesn't. I don't know. I'm like, they're not going to remember any, either way. Whatever. So, okay. I'm the only person that can go in the room. Well, there's only one parent that can go in there, and my wife's like, "I'm not doing it. I'm not going in there." So I go in there. I'm holding his little tiny baby hand. They strap his legs down, and then this is about the most traumatic thing. A man, this is like torture for me. And I, and I mean, good thing he's never going to remember this because holy shit. Okay. So first thing they do is stick a needle right at the base of his penis, just oh, right in the ball. And I'm like whoa, whoa, whoa. twice. I'm like, Oh, what? what are we doing? Ray? What are we doing? Are you, you going to describe the entire circumcision? Yeah. This is like Huel's, uh, Huel's vasectomy. So, <laughs> so they go in and they, they stick the needle in there and I'm, this is Dick Tingles galore, right? I'm like, ow, this this is not good. I'm getting so Dick go Tingles right now, Ray. God, I know it. it's rough, man. Hey, I had to I had to physically watch this, so now you got to hear my description of it, get into your mind. 
So they go in and they do all the clamping and all the stuff and they end up finishing the procedure, right? All right. So I got my hands full with holding his little, you know, having his little hand hold my finger. And then they have the sugar wire that you can dip the pacifier in that apparently, you know, it helps him out. And he's, he's loving that part. So doctor finishes, goes to like wash his hands. And what do you know happens? Little baby Oliver starts peeing and he shoots a string right up in the air, hits himself in the face. And I'm like, is there anything worse than, <laughs> is there anything worse than having not only your dick sniffed, but all of a sudden you shoot yourself in the face with pee. So anyway, that was my amazingly fun time with the doctor. Thanks, Ray. It it was it was definitely a circus. It was it was insane. <laughs> Jesus Christ, right? You know how terrible it is to watch that. Like it is absolutely horrible, and I couldn't right. let let right. others not experience that. When my son was circumcised, the doctor, my pediatrician, came into the room and said, "Hey, are we ready?" I'm like, "Yep, there you go. He's right there." They wheeled the little baby into the nursery. <laughs> my wife and I stayed in the in the room by ourselves. And snip, snip, uh, 20 minutes later, in comes kids sleeping soundly. I didn't have to do any of that shit. So I don't know what horrible doctor that you go or to that they make you witness this torture. Uh, but, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, it was can rough. I just say, it was like, there's, there's this weird movement now with men, uh, obviously with men, uh, where like they want their foreskin back or they're upset their foreskin's gone. Right. <laughs> and like, okay. All right. Should I have told the doctor to save it? <laughs> <laughs> gross. Just fucking gross. No. Uh, gentlemen, uh, gentlemen who are circumcised, let me just tell you, you are blessed to be circumcised. Okay. No offense to the uncircumcised men. You're all great. You're all wonderful, but you got a weird looking elephant trunk down in your pants and it freaks me out. Y- y- the, the way to go is circumcision. Yes. Uh, I know, uh, we weren't made that way from the Lord, our God, right? But we made it better. We made it look more attractive. It's a lot easier to clean. Um, it looks more attractive. Uh, and it's it's not freaking me out when I have to stare down at my junk and see this weird little extra thing hanging off the end of it. It's 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 pristine, and it's clean, <laughs> and it's beautiful. It's beautiful. So circumcision is the way to go. I am so glad my parents made sure I was circumcised. Um, the doctor needed like an extra large forceps because you know Ray, that's that's what happens. But what are you gonna do? Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, thank God I'm circumcised. Thank you, uh, Rem Mama and Papa Rem. Uh, Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, I, that's, that's, you know, it's a good thing to do. It is. It was just torture to watch it. So because I, like I said, because I had to experience, I had to pass that along. It was brutal watching that. Oh, my God. I, I can't get it out of my mind. And then, so today, so Kaylee's got her little cast on, right, for Broken Thumb. And it had a little, for whatever reason, the cloth, like, on the inside, because it's coming out of the thumb. It's this long little strip. You know, you know. Kind of looks a little bit the same as the little forest game. I was joking with my wife. I was like, "Hey, uh, if you need, it, I can. Uh, I, I just watched the, the the boy get circumcised. I think I can handle this." She just rolled her eyes at me. She's like, "Oh my god, you're did you idiot. handle it?" Oh yeah, I cut that cut that bad boy right off. Cut that fucker right off. Yeah, nice, good mm-hmm. job, good job. So in the last like uh, about a week and a half, I've cut, uh, I've essentially cut the umbilical cord. Essentially done a circumcision, you know, so I'm, I'm pretty much a doctor yeah, at this point. Basically the same thing. Yeah. Good. Good. I'm glad you're learning yeah. every day, Ray. You went from IT mm-hmm. guy to some sort of construction that I didn't know about to, uh, to doctor. So <laughs> yeah. 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 I am the James Bond of, of the real world. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of James Bond, make sure you go to Amazon.com, search Rich Sigmund, check out our t-shirts. There's the El Abogado t-shirt in honor of our dead lawyer, Huel. And there is the eat the rich, eat the rich, eat the rich. There it is. Eat the rich t-shirt. That you can wear when uh, visiting a political event of some sort or a protest. You want to be undercover. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, we also have our slightly better than mediocre t shirt as well. Uh, that done good. Here we go. Well, I ha- I've had a weird week, Ray, and I wish I remembered most of it. This is why I need, when I, when I tell you to put something in the notes for me, I like, I need to give you more details. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I know. That's why I put it in there as best I could, but that's literally almost yeah. word for word what you said to put in the notes. Like, I, I went to Angry Birds 2, and there's a note here about it, and I don't remember. I don't remember what, what it was about. I have no idea. But, oh, okay, I remember now. All it right. was, it started yeah. with the wasps. Okay, it started with the, okay, so, all right, so that's right? Saturday. Mm. Mm-hmm. 
Actually, it was Sunday with Angry Birds, and I think Saturday. Okay, I'm mowing my lawn, right? Like I'm just mowing my lawn, and these fucking wasps just started attacking me. Like I got, you were I got, so heated. I was so mad, Ray. You and, like, were so we, mad. We essentially, we essentially did a Rich Dickman show through text messages. I was just, I was so mad <laughs> at the goddamn wasps. Great. Like, I was crying, laughing. It was like good. they fucking, they sung me in the ear, Ray. They sung me in the goddamn <laughs> ear. Like, like who does that? <laughs> who does that shit? Uh, uh, yeah. So, so I had, I had a wasp attack while I was mowing the lawn. I didn't even finish mowing. Like it's, it's a part of my street that it's not technically my property, but it's close enough to me. The city's not going to do it. So I have to do it. It goes up to the stop sign in the corner, you know, so I just do it once a week. I'm not doing it anymore. Cause I don't know what the goddamn wasps are. So the city can, can do that shit. Fuck. Can you not sue you. them? You could sue them. Sue them really? I, yeah. But then you got to pay for a lawyer. <laughs> you know, yeah, he'll, not, yeah actually, he'll be in over in the Middle East. It doesn't help any of that. So. Yeah. yeah. So then we went to see Angry Birds 2. All right. And uh, let me just say Angry Birds 2, actually quite funny. There's a lot of uh, adult jokes in there for, for the parents. So it's actually, it's pretty funny. Uh, we had a good time. Uh, but, um, you know, Ray, the reason I like going to movies alone or with another adult is because when you go alone, I get popcorn. La la. Yeah, oh, yeah. I get, yeah. I get popcorn yeah. and oh, maybe wow. I bring my own water with me and that's it. That's it. That's all you need in the movie is just popcorn. That's it. Maybe a drink, but then you got to get up and pee, so stay away from the drink, okay? No, no, no. I got to go. My kids, right? Oh, we want french fries. What do you mean you want french fries? <laughs> we're at a movie theater. Yeah, but they have french fries. <laughs> but we're at a movie theater. You get popcorn. I don't want popcorn. I want french fries with cheese on them. Like, really? All right. So now, because because we can't get anywhere on time ever, you know, because God forbid, right? You know, the movie is just starting. Well, it's actually the previews that are just starting. It was at 2.15. Right now it's 2.14 and we're in line. I'm like, you know what? You guys just go ahead. Go go sit down and get the seats and I will wait. I will wait for these goddamn french fries. Okay. So I'm waiting for these french fries. They can only do one order at a time, right? And I got two kids. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. What kind of so, bargain yeah. bin theater is this? Yes. Yeah. Because I didn't, I didn't know they were getting french fries. I had my popcorn and I went over to the, to the uh, butter topping flavoring uh, station with the salt and everything and I'm making my popcorn nice. And then I come back over. I'm like, what are you guys waiting for? Like, oh, we're waiting for french fries. I'm like, oh, fucking, fucking fuck. <laughs> so I have all this delicious butter topping on my popcorn just like sitting there and getting getting cold. And I had told them to go. So I'm, I'm watching this guy. He puts the order in and he, he takes it out and he, and he empties it into a little tray. And I'm like, all right. Um, I think this was supposed to be split in two. Do you have another one of these? He's like, no, no, we have another order to make. I'm like, oh, son of a bitch. So I have to wait for that second order. <laughs> And then while I'm waiting, my son texts me from from his seat. He's like, "Hey, we want we want ices." I'm like, what do you mean you want ices? <laughs> yeah, she wants a blue one. I want a red one. I'm like, oh, "Father, fucking, fucking, fucking <laughs> shit!" So there's, you know, I'm I'm sitting to the side. I got one order of fries getting cold because the other one's cooking, and like I got to order these fucking ices. I'm like, "Hey, man, I can I just get an icy one, red, one blue, please? Two ices, two small ones. Yeah, they only come in one size." I'm like, son of a bitch. <laughs> They're not gonna drink the fucking whole thing. <laughs> so, anyways, um, just so I, if in case you're wondering, I did not miss the beginning of the movie. The previews were long enough, but it was enough to. I think I was texting you during this as well. We had like another Rich Dickman show. Yes. Happening. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So that was yeah, that was Sunday, and then Monday was fine, and Tuesday was fine, and then on Wednesday we had uh, we had a Pokemon event. My son and I we had a. The uh, Rayquaza Raid Hour, and he's been dying to get one of these Rayquaza dealies. Okay, it's just how do these work? Jacket. Is it like you have a higher probability of getting that specific one or something like that? Uh, no, they have um, they have uh, like like they call them raids, where a bunch of people go and take down a big Pokemon. And at, during this specific hour, Rayquaza was at all the raid gyms, so you have you have plenty of opportunities to raid it and try to catch him. Okay, yeah, uh, That's fun. so. Yeah. So the, the Pokemon days, and I've talked about this in the past on the Rich Dickman show, is is uh, they bring out all sorts of people, okay? And, and I love all my Pokemon brethren. And, and just to be clear, <laughs> I play because my son plays. Otherwise, I just I would forget all about it. But he likes to play, and it's something we do together. We go out, we walk around, and and we when we play Pokemon, it's fun. Um, but yeah, it, all sorts of people come out to these things, and you, you see all shapes and sizes, and um, and all ages, which is interesting as well. There was this one guy on Wednesday who I wasn't really paying attention to till about like the second or third raid, 
when I heard him say, Hey, I'm getting really frustrated. You think you can catch this for me? And like the group leader like went over and helped him catch whatever the fuck he was trying to catch. What? Yeah. Um, oh no, this was on, this was, this was on Sunday. This wasn't the Rayquaza raid hour. This was a sweet soon raid day. Oh, I'm fucking this one up. Anyways, story still remains. It's still, this still happened just at a different time. Um, yeah, this was Saturday. Okay. So there was, there was this, this guy. He couldn't catch this thing, right? So we get to another one and we, we defeat the boss and I look over, I'm watching this guy try to catch his Pokemon and he's just, he's getting angry. He's, he's flicking the little ball <laughs> on his phone and his face is like crunching up and he does it again and he <laughs> snaps his head back and forth. Like he's getting, he's literally getting pissed off, like to the point where I need to back away from this fucking guy because he's scaring me because he's getting angry. He's getting really angry. He's not catching this, this goddamn Pokemon. <laughs> I'm thinking, man, you're like, you're like 43 years old, bro. I mean, I know it's sweet soon, right? <laughs> Nobody wants that shitty boss except you do, but whatever. Um, calm down, calm, calm your ass down. <laughs> he was angry, right? He was just so angry at everything. He's like, come on, man. Life's good. Oh, I know. It's good. Yeah. Well, especially you're in a group setting. Like you gotta, you gotta kind of control yourself, not get too out of shape. But yeah. especially like, well, that is what's pretty fun about that kind of thing is, as much as there's some really weird, creepy people that probably show up, it's it is interesting to see like the the variety of people. It is, that is what's pretty cool about that stuff is you do get people from all walks of life. So it's pretty fun to see that. You know, you get your uh, families, you know, dads and kids and moms and you know a little bit of everything. But yeah, it's uh, <laughs> some guy getting all bent out of shape. Like, oh, he was I, this freaking Pokemon. He was so mad. <laughs> get okay. the ball. So th- this last one, this is kind of a, we- a weird one. All right, so I just picked my parents up from Italy uh, last night. I had to drive. This is why we're doing the show on Friday. I had to drive up to Boston during rush hour to pick up my goddamn parents on their international flight. <laughs> it took me. Th- it's a two-hour drive. It took me three hours to get up there, and then you know they didn't get out through customs till late. We, I mean, I didn't get home till after ten thirty. Um, anyways, so my dad they came over today. To, you know, bring us their gifts from Italy. And I, you know, I said, I, I got some actual Italian Nutella. I got an artichoke t-shirt that I asked for that they somehow found. It was amazing. And a bunch of little, little snacks that I remember from when I was there a couple of years ago. But all of a sudden, my dad starts telling me this story of how he needs to get another massage on his shoulder because he's had a couple of shoulder surgeries and they stiffen up. And I'm like, all right. I mean, that's kind of weird. You're just talking to me about getting a massage in your shoulder out of nowhere, but whatever, Pop. I know you <laughs> ain't no thing, <laughs> whatever. And and he says, I got this. I got this one at home uh, that, that's small, but it doesn't really it doesn't really do the job for me. And I had to go to a weird place to get it. <laughs> and, and I start connecting the dots here. So when they first got to Italy, we had to go to. Uh, they have a Sam's Club membership, right? So I texted my mom. I'm like, yo, can I borrow your Sam's Club card? Because we got to go buy some shit in bulk. We got lots of stuff to get. And I'm like, she's like, all right, yeah, it's in the drawer next to your father's bed. So when I went over there to go water their plants and shit. And I opened up the, the drawer next to my father's bed. Um, and and I there's like a pack of credit cards that he kept you know, at home because he was not going to bring them all to Italy with him. And I noticed there was like like a little, a little not a little, <laughs> medium-sized pink massager <laughs> in the drawer. <laughs> and I thought that was interesting. It was like one of those Hitachi <laughs> deals, you know? And I'm like, all right, um, I wish I never opened this drawer, but you guys, but do you, whatever it's going on, you, you guys do you, right? <laughs> and then I realized my father's telling me about getting his massage. This is exactly why he's telling me this bullshit story about needing a massage for his shoulder <laughs> and having to go to some weird place to get the bunny he has. <laughs> I'm thinking... You never had to say a thing, man. I never would have said anything. It would have been our little secret. But no, I get this whole made-up story and how you ended up with this little pink Hitachi massager. <laughs> oh, my God. That's amazing. Oh, my God. That's amazing. Oh, oh. my dad's the best. He's the best. <laughs> you know, just stuff. Okay, so that doesn't obviously mean he's – well, okay. It just reminds me of what for some reason when I was a kid – I don't know why this came up into my popped into my brain, but I was like having a sleepover at some friend's house and they were talking about how they were like, yeah, I think like friend. last time we spent the night at so-and-so's house, like their mom and dad were making a bunch of noise in their room no. and saying something like they were like, he was 
like spanking her and saying she was in trouble and it was really weird and then all of us kids you know we're like eight or nine or whatever and we're like that's really weird like that's really weird what the heck why would you do that that doesn't make any sense and just i don't know it's just the things that when you're a kid you think all your parents are innocent and then you grow up and you might uh see a thing or two where it just leads to some uh your imagination is like no 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 can't go there not not my parents yeah you know, maybe this will be a sexy episode now. You know, I, I wasn't maybe. planning on it. Maybe I'll subvert the subversion. How about that? Yeah. So, yeah. So I brought, they brought me back a bunch of stuff from Stay Italy, tuned. which is awesome. Yeah. And I got a bunch of canned meat. I love fucking canned meat from Italy. It's amazing. Ray, I wish you were here now where we could eat canned meat together. Mm. Fucking great. Um, they brought me a bottle of limoncello and which reminded me that I had an old bottle of limoncello they brought me, uh, last year. And I am drinking that tonight, Ray. I am drinking that tonight. Not only that, but earlier uh, when when they were over visiting, I had uh, some homemade wine. Uh, unfortunately, I ended up taking a nap in between, so I lost that really good buzz. So maybe we'll get it back tonight. <laughs> maybe we'll get it back. All right. Uh, what else you got? You got anything else? You want to move on? Uh, let's see. Oh, we went to the fair, and basically, fuck the fair. It's literally the worst fucking place, dude. So we had gone there, I think it was so two years ago we went there, and they had said, if you buy the tickets for and your child is too short to ride the ride by themselves, then an adult can accompany them. So we're there all day. We spent like, dude, every ride costs you probably like $2.50 or something like that. So we, we probably spent like 50 bucks in tickets, and we're going on all these rides for the kids, right? We get toward the end of the day, last ride of the day. And so my brother-in-law decides he's going to go with my older daughter on this last ride. And the person operating the ride's like, no, he, where's his tickets? And we're like, well, he he's just accompanying her. And there's no one in line. There's literally nobody else in line. It's not like he's taking somebody else's spot. And they're like, no, he, he can't go. He can't go. He doesn't have a ticket. And we're like, well, but they've told us that he can actually just go on the ride and accompany her because she's smaller, like barely too short. He's like, nope. So the person throws, a, you know, just puts their foot down, and says no. So we're like, okay, well, let's go talk to the the manager. And we go over and get it gets escalated, and we end up standing there for probably like ninety minutes waiting for this person. And then they come out and they're like, yeah, uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna help you out at all. Like you can't do it. And just just basically, we're terrible customer service. Just a bunch of dickheads. Right. So what? You're fucking bringing me down, man. Circumcisions and people no. not going on rides. <laughs> so so basically. We're like, fuck this. We're never coming back here other than like minimal stuff. Like we hate the fair basically. And the thing is like everyone around here thinks the fair is the best thing that's ever happened in this town. And they're fucking crazy. Oh, it's terrible. Shitty ride. Like you feel like you're afraid for your life going down like the one that has your little sack that you sit on and the slide. Like that's scary because you think that thing's rickety and you're going to die. Have you ever been on those two little teacup ones where you can spin them in the middle? Like you grab that yeah. in the middle and you can spin. Yeah. Yeah. It's I got fucking on, awesome. I got on one of those one time with Stella at like same year, right? We get on there. We sit in there. This other little kid gets in there and this kid just starts spinning it, spinning it, spinning it. Yeah. And Stella's like, I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> we well, didn't even start the ride. She's like, I'm out. This is, this is fucked up. Um, so anyway, so we don't really enjoy the fair that much. And so we go over there cause we're like, all right. It's here. It's in town. We just had the baby. Whatever. We're going to go anyway. So we take, so we go over there and this is the same thing where the guy eats the, the freaking elote, the corn. And he's got like fucking mayonnaise and mustard and fucking Mexican cheese all over his face. I'm like, wipe your goddamn face, man. You're in public. It's like running down his chin, like dripping on his shirt. Right, tell the story, Ray. <laughs> so we go, <laughs> dude, the fair sucks, man. I'm telling you, I'm just reinforcing the fair fucking sucks. So anyway, so we go to the fair and we're just, you know, just there for lunch. We're just going to go to lunch. But it, literally, it's the same thing every goddamn year. I just want to complain about the fair. You no. go there and it's... <laughs> I'm not going to let you complain about the fair uh, unopposed. The fair is awesome, <laughs> Ray. The fair is How? Fucking... How is it awesome? Ray, here's your problem is you live in California and California fucking sucks. All right. Nobody enjoys anything in California. Everything you need else to come in out. California is awesome. You, you need to go to a Midwest fair or a Northeast fair or even a Southern fair. Or a Southwest Fair. Anything but California. Pacific Northwest Fair. Okay. So what do they uh, have there that we don't have here? They have the same things, but it's awesome because you have, you have a whole bunch of interesting food, right? And you got some really good grilled stuff. Okay. And kids love fried dough. You get fried dough and they have a bunch of shitty rides that are a lot of fun. You spend too much money on, but you know what? God damn it. The kids have fun 
on them. And then you have the great excuse of, yeah, you know what? I just spent 40 bucks on rides for you, little dude. I'm not going to pay anymore. So sorry. And you're done. They have lemonade, Ray. There's lots of fresh squeezed lemonade. And yeah, there is $11. $11 for the big jug that you get unlimited refills for you, <laughs> dick. All right. There's also cotton candy. Okay. And if they have, if it's like an expo, they have, um, you know, a lot of local different offerings. Uh, sometimes mm-hmm. like the yeah. Thai restaurants come as well. And then, and then here in Connecticut, they have like livestock fairs where you can go and just look at a bunch of cows and sheep. And did you know how big the testicles are in sheep? They're fucking huge, Ray. Right? There's a lot of mm-hmm. testicles and sheep and they're massive. And here's what's great about testicles and sheep is that they're fuzzy. All right. They're, they have <laughs> the fucking wool on them. It's amazing. It's amazing. So fairs are awesome. Yeah. So fuck you, can you cut them off and hang them from your rear view mirror. Yes, it's like uh, a couple, sheet balls. <laughs> paint a couple dots on them. And you're, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, we actually we went into the little craft fair thing area or the vendor fair, and it was pretty funny. So the my kids did the little um, plinko thing. They put the little thing top bounces down, gets to the bottom, and they won. It like landed in the middle. For I don't know how their their thing was all fucked up, but it landed right in the middle. So they're like, oh well, you kids, you get to decide. So. What do you want to pick? A temporary tattoo that's about the size of a quarter, or we have free tickets to this like live sporting event. And they're like, eh, the tattoo. And I'm like, God <laughs> damn it. Like, I can't, I'm not going to actually tell, like, I can't like hijack that from my kids and be like, I'm taking this. But I'm like, all right, you guys pick. And at one point, Stella was like, the tickets. And then they're like, oh, you want like, to, do you want soccer or do you want the football? And she's like, oh, the tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, God damn it. Like it would have been nice to get. That's why, the, like, literally everything there sucks, man. Like you just leave. Oh, it's so dirty and uh, yeah, it's dumb. that's that's because you're just you're just a, you're just being a bad parent. So yeah, so <laughs> whatever. So the only thing that I got there for lunch, okay, I was like tempted to get like a turkey leg, which sounds amazing. They are amazing, but then it's literally fifteen dollars for just a turkey leg, and I'm like, well, I don't want just a turkey leg. And I also don't want to spend $30 on food for myself. Like, I don't want to get a turkey leg and something else. Because what are you supposed to do? Like, get get a turkey leg and, like, a deep-fried Oreo? Still spend 30 bucks? Like, it's ridiculous. So I got the, um, I got the, uh, what was it, lobster fries. Mm, that was good. Okay, now it's something that's good. Fuck you, Ray, and your inconsistent bullshit. I mean, you you, you need to spend the rest of the, Fuck you, Ray, dick. <laughs> Come out to Connecticut. I'll tell you. It wasn't worth it, though. All right, yeah. yeah let's do it. I'm, I'm moving on. Okay. When's love, your, when's your fair? Is it this time of year normally? Summer? Yeah. Well, summer? yeah. They'll be starting up like this weekend and next weekend and go through, uh, September. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We can go spend $11 on a soft serve cone. Absolutely. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I love my butt. Mm. Are you ready to play this clip? I love my Amazon Alexa, but this is what can happen. This is this is very sexy. Hold on. It was muted. Yeah, no problem. Basically, my kids yell to Amazon Alexa all the time, and it never understands them because they have little baby kid voices. Yeah. And so this is a prime example of what happens. Here we go. This is not my kids, by the way. He's trying to say play digger you digger. You want to hear a station for porn detected. Porno region. No. Hot chick amateur girl. No, sexy. no, 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 no. 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 <laughs> Alexa, stop. <laughs> Is that real? Yes, yes. Yeah. You can see the video, right? Yeah. I, I mean, some people do shit all the time, but you know, they got deep fakes now. But <laughs> that's great. <laughs> it's pretty good. No, if you keep playing it, it actually goes uh, – it gets even better. That was the end of it. Get, it is, oh, that was the end of it? Oh, okay. yeah. Maybe it was oh, – I thought I thought it was longer than that. Anyway, it basically does it, – it'll find some weird wacky stuff. But that's – like the Amazon Alexa or whatever it is, they're great. They're awesome for just – you know, basically we just use it for like timers and stuff like that now. And, f- you know, you do have to do the whole – yeah, I have an Amazon Alexa. <laughs> and like whisper so it doesn't be like what and try and try and all of a sudden look up something that you were just having a conversation about um but yeah they're they're kind of annoying sometimes i have a have google you, home one? yeah I, I don't have an alexa because i didn't like the okay the alexa being the trigger with google you have to say hey google for anything to work right you can't just say google you have to say hey google and it even works if you say hey googly goo 
as my daughter figured out. I love my <laughs> my Google. I've got one. I got the like the big Google home in my kitchen and I got like minis in my kids' rooms. My daughter doesn't really use her, so I might steal it from her. But um you play, pair that with Google Music and my God, Ray, I am I am so happy. When I'm in there cooking and I'm rocking and rolling, I say, Hey Google, play Shine Down and then boom, off we off to the races. Like we're just fucking killing it, man. I'm like, I'm making my food, I'm cooking, I'm chopping shit up, I'm getting dinner ready for the family, and I'm rocking and rolling and and I love it. Then I say, Hey Google, set a timer for fifteen minutes and she's like, Okay, timer set for fifteen minutes starting now. And I'm like, Yes. There we go. I have Google set. So when I come home, if I say, Google, I'm home, she will not only turn all the lights on, but she will also play Catch Your Breath, which is the Finn Balor theme song, the WWE wrestler. <laughs> yeah. So like I have my own entrance music now because of my Google. It's amazing. Nice. I love my Google, uh, Ray. And there is no, well, there is a but. I love my Google, but she doesn't always understand me. She doesn't always hear me. And... <laughs> In a world where we are so used to things happening instantly like that, when it doesn't happen, you get unreasonably frustrated. Do you remember? Exactly. I used to have an iPhone, right? And I had Siri Mm -hmm. on it. And I thought Siri was the coolest thing. It's basically in Google Home, right? But it got to the point where I would – because I would wear my earbuds all day and I had the things you hit the little button and you can talk to Siri and she'll do shit for you. So I'd have a text message come in and it would go do 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 and I'd go, hey, Siri, read text message. And you know most of the time she would read it to me. But other times she'd be like, I'm sorry. I did not understand. And I'd be like, hey, Siri, please read text message. I'm sorry. I do not understand. Would you like me to help? <laughs> yeah. and, I, and I would get unreasonably – unreasonably pissed off at Siri so much so that I had to change her voice from female to male because I found myself like getting mad <laughs> yelling at like Siri's weird female accent. I had to change it to male because I couldn't, I didn't like yelling at a female so much. <laughs> I I did that one time I was trying to do something like at the DMV and it was all automated and it was like, it was saying, put in your license plate number. And, and I was like, Okay, well, it's probably better if I use the voice, right? Because how do I do that when on on your phone, the two corresponds to A, B, C, three, D, E, F. You know what I mean? So I was like, well, how do I do the numbers? How do I distinguish between the numbers and the letters? So I was like, well, let me, let me do it on the phone. And after calling probably like five or six times and it constantly – like in, in within each call, like – Three or four times it being like, I'm sorry, I don't understand. Can you try again? Or it, it repeating something back different. I, and me, I was, like, I was in the car at the time, just yelling at the top of my lungs, like, you fucking motherfucker. Yeah. Like, you suck. Like, I can't. God damn it. It's work. Like, I, you, you just hate it. You absolutely hate You're like, why are they using this shit? Why can't I just talk to, and then the whole time, you know, probably the last one was just me yelling, like, I don't give a fuck. Let me talk to someone. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, God damn, how many times do I have to call before I just talk to a live person? I tell them what my license plate number is. That's like, it's literally just seven numbers that are like seven. Oh my God. So frustrating. So frustrating. Yeah. When they misunderstand you, it, it's literally the end of the world. It, it's apocalyptic. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's terrible. It's, it's really, it's really terrible. It's like, it's like with the internet, you know, remember we used to dial up and you have all the weird dial up sounds. <laughs> and, you know, I remember <laughs> getting a 14 four baud modem. I'm like, holy shit, I'm top of the mm-hmm. line now. Right. And then I got a 64 K. I'm like, yeah, motherfucker. I got high goddamn speed internet in this shit. Right. But yeah. now if, if your phone, if, if that little device in your pocket that has access to the world's information on it of all time and space and history, if it doesn't load the web page you're looking for in the next second and a half, like you, you're swearing at your phone. What the fuck is wrong with my connection? Fuck this Wi-Fi. Fuck 4G. You know, you're just getting pissed off because it didn't happen <laughs> instantaneously. Yeah. Well, you should see me. Like I built like a supercomputer. I have gig internet on fiber. Like it's insanely fast. Like my friends joke that whenever I download stuff, it slows down their internet because it sucks all the internet up. Like I download shit so fucking fast and I go anywhere else. If I wait, if I have to wait like half of a second, I'm like, what the fuck is wrong? Like everything on my computer is instant. This is bullshit. Yeah. It it literally gets to that where you just just fly off the hinge just because you have to wait another literally like one second. Hey, our beautiful audience, yeah. help Ray build Rem a supercomputer like that. Go mm. to patreon.com slash Rich Thickman and uh, let's you know, do it. If you would like, if you'd like to help support the show, 
Ray had some great ideas for some new Patreon goals. Uh, we do need to sit down and have a business meeting, Ray, and uh, get that yes, stuff together. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to jump around tonight, Rayzo, and we're going to do we're going to go out of order, okay? Sure. And if anyone like for real, though, I really like actually building computers. It's so fun. So if anyone out there is building a computer and you want some just feedback, like I love talking about computers. Yeah. And Ray charges twenty three dollars an hour. So make sure you have a PayPal account that you or Venmo that you can get him money. No, it's uh, it's you can you can make a donation to the Rich Tickman Show via PayPal, uh, the Patreon. Yeah, or yeah, Rich Patreon, Tickman Show PayPal. at gmail dot com on on PayPal. I don't know how that works. Don't know how it works. And this is like professional, actual professional advice, like legitimate. I know what I'm talking about. So you know, it's it's actually worth your money. Yeah, my my man builds warehouses. <laughs> this is a bumper for the dick tips segment because ray wanted an excuse to make his voice sound cool and talk about himself in the third person so joshua asks i was watching the movie there's something about mary and wanted and wanted to get your opinion on a very important question that was raised in the movie what is the proper amount of time before a date to jerk off First of all, I would like to say that I really appreciate our audience using like their real names to when they write in. Um, yeah, I do too. It, yeah, it's like it's like a nice you know a personal. We do leave off the last touch. names for those. Yeah, for those that write in, we we do leave off the last names in case just for an, a little bit of anonymity. Um, yeah, you know, except, like except we had if you're Jim Ray. Adaya, the, Ray's got his whole fucking oh, yeah. life out there. <laughs> yeah, but for example, like when Jebediah wrote it, I mean Jebediah is obviously he's a butter churning guy, so you know. yeah. He's pretty easy to find that guy, but other than that, you know, we we do we do uh, keep a little anonymity for you guys. It's just weird that y'all have J's. I, I don't get that, but whatever. Okay, so what's the proper amount of time? We have a very select audience. Okay, <laughs> before a date to jerk off. All right, Ray. Um, you know, this is you know, there's a lot of a lot of opinions, a lot of thoughts on on uh, jerking off versus date time, right? Now there there is there is a case to be made for jerking off before you know you're going to have sex in order to perform and last longer, but you also run the risk of not being able to perform at all, you know. So, but that that's not what the question here is. It's listen, you know, you go out or you meet somebody new. Maybe you don't get enough attention at home, right? And maybe maybe no one's like touching you, or you know, maybe whatever it is, right? And you go to meet somebody new for the first time. You know, you might have a little issue as if you were like we talked about last week or two weeks ago, excuse me, in getting a massage, right? Uh, or you might have might have an issue. So, in order to curb uh, a, a, your pants getting tight, sometimes people <laughs> would advise you to uh, masturbate before going out. You know, get get all that poison out of your head because listen, between you and me, Ray, and the rest of the audience here, all eight of you, um. You know, it is poison, right? It'll fuck your brain up, right? And you got all that shit stuck inside your body. It will mess you up. You won't be able to think if it gets too bad. You won't be able to put two and two together. All you can think about is a sweet, sweet promise land, if you know what I'm saying. So you got to get it out. Yeah. So the, the the closest comparison that I can think of that anyone can relate to is it's like if you have to go to the bathroom really, really bad. Your bladder's full and you're like... All you can think about is, I need to go to the bathroom. I need, you just focus on that, right? It's the same kind of thing where you're like, you're on a one-track mind. Like, I don't care what else is happening. Yeah, sure. Yep. I agree with everything. And then, you, you know, you just want to get somewhere else and do something else. Yeah. So, so Joshua, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to answer your question here after that long preamble. And I, forgive me, uh, I've been doing a lot of drinking today. <laughs> but if it, it kind of depends on a date. Like, are you getting sex later? Or are you not getting sex? Okay. So if you're getting sex later, you might want to jerk off maybe a half hour before the date starts, maybe an hour before the date starts, because that gets you, gets you back to level and keeps you there for a little bit longer. And if things are going to pick up later in the evening, you know, you've had enough, plenty of recovery time to get, um, to get things working again and to build up uh, a quite a reservoir of production, if you know what I mean. Um, now, if you, if there is no sex here, if you're just going out on a regular date and you just want to avoid the embarrassment of, Hey, baby, can you just give me a second? I need just a second to stand up. My, I have a cramp, right? <laughs> um, may, 
so like, are you picking her up, right? If you're picking her up at eight ten and it takes you 20 minutes to get there, that means you have to leave at seven fifty, which means you need to knock that thing out seven forty eight, So you can get your pants up, flush the toilet and go. <laughs> All right. You want to do it as close to the date as possible. Possibly, you know, when you go to pick her up, you say, <laughs> Hey, revealing. Yeah. Hey, Stephanie, uh, can I use your bathroom? And you get in there, you knock it out real quick. And then you go on your date and you don't have to worry, you don't have to worry about it the rest of the night. You don't have to worry. Yeah, that's interesting. So, okay. So it, what I'm imagining Joshua is asking is in, in a situation similar to there's something about Mary, which it's a first date, but he's trying to relieve himself so that he doesn't want to do that. So he can just have a normal date. Yeah. Then poison, poison. I, yeah. Then I would say definitely last second because it, it really does affect, it, it affects men. Um, some more than others. There's, there's, but that's the thing. It's, it's, you got to know yourself. Um, uh, when I was in college, they had this, um, they call it like the reload challenge or something along those lines where it was who can jerk off twice within the shortest amount of time. And what one guy actually was like 45 seconds. So wow. you got to know that all I'm saying is that I know, right? Did you watch all I'm saying this? is. I did not watch it, but there was a lot of people there that witnessed it that can corroborate that story. 45 so, seconds in front of people. <laughs> Holy shit. Dude. Uh, yeah. So all I'm saying – now this is college. You know, you got some you know, hormones going. All I'm saying is you got to know your own limits. That's that's the what it ultimately boils down to. If you're this guy that can, they can do it every 45 seconds, well, you're, I mean, you're literally – just don't go on dates if that's what you're worried about. You literally just uh, – just sit at home and watch porn. And just, uh, I, I don't know. You got to get some like large tube socks or something and just <laughs> like the extra large ones and just, yeah. just go to town until maybe, uh, till maybe you get to a couple hours. Yeah. And when, then, then you can start work, thinking about dates. When you get the extra large, to, or large tube socks with the, like the stripes at the top of them, um, then you know you've accomplished <laughs> something. Yes. Yeah. You, oh God. Like so a, many nasty images running like through my mind. Basketball player with my dick. Uh so <laughs> Joshua, you know, and also in order to avoid this situation completely, get you get you a girl that you know what you're getting into, right? Like you know what she's down for. I think these days you can figure that stuff out a lot quicker than you could in the past. You know, if it's a first date, that's one thing, but if you're with a girl you've seen before. I mean, maybe we can just lay it out. Hey, baby, are we gonna are we gonna get down tonight, or like, what are we, we just eating some wild buffalo wild wings? Like, what, what's what's happening? I need to I need to know if I got a shower or not. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, the whole point of a date is to figure out if you're compatible or not. So you be yourself. If you're gonna like tell her, hey, you know, I gotta go to the. It's been 15 minutes. I gotta go to the bathroom and jerk off. And she's like, yeah, no problem. <laughs> you know, you, you know, it's it's a match made in heaven. So yeah. if she says, let me help, all you that. gotta, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. There you go. And if she's like, uh, I oh my friend, I forgot my friend's having surgery right now. And you're like, what at 9:30 at night? Yeah, then uh, of course you you, uh, you know it's 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 not gonna work out. You just uh swipe right on the next one. Or what, is it right or left? Whatever. I don't know, Ray. You're the one who uses Tinder. I don't me. even know. I, I was trying to show someone the other day. I just oh, get my sisters came picks. over. Oh, dude. <laughs> my sisters came over the other day and I was telling them, I was like, hey, so I, because uh, I hadn't told them I was doing the podcast, but because it is kind of lewd, but I was telling them and I was like, yeah, so I got, it, it kind of came up and I was like, yeah, so I, I got on Tinder because we it kind of came up. And I was like showing them the Tinder stuff and they were like, what? Like, that is insane. And I was like, wait, I actually had to ask one of my sisters. I was like, is it right or left? I can't even remember. And she actually knew. And I was like, oh, <laughs> but it's, so wait, it's what do you funny. got? What do you got? Like all the females in your family are like super religious, but your dad isn't. No, it's my, my mom and dad are yeah. for the most part. But your dad listens uh, to the show. Hi, Mr. Ray. How are you? I'd like to meet you yeah, someday. So, I think I've, you're probably pretty, pretty pretty cool dude i'm sorry yeah i'm sorry mr ray for what i've done to your son but he's a wonderful gentleman i like talking to him he's a good friend to me so this is this um, is me you know he he is 34 years old now and he has three kids god bless you ray he's got a good job and he's got a, a wonderful wife so I, I i i i'm glad that you let him do things like this you know where he can come out and flex <laughs> his creative wings with me i I'm did sorry. ask my dad permission before doing this podcast yeah i i, I imagined you did <laughs> you know i'm sorry that it is it is lewd and we do talk, use you know loose language and such but you know what it's good for him it's good for him to learn how normal people speak in the real world 
uh, being in California, he's stuck with a bunch of bourgeois, weird people Fuckheads. who want to save turtles rather than the environment as a whole. Uh, he needs to get out to the Midwest and to, to the Northeast where the real heart and soul of this country are, you know, the farmers and, and the machinists and the builders, you know, not just the artists out there in California. So I don't know where any of that came from, Ray, and I'm, I'm really sorry. And please tell your dad I'm sorry when we talk to him next. <laughs> you know, what's funny is um, at one point I was a machinist here <laughs> and <laughs> and I literally live in like the world's largest agricultural area. So your whole go to the Midwest, it's like I, we just shut down. California just shut down all of your, your it's brand still, ideas. Yeah, but Ray, it's but, still California. So go yeah. fuck yourself. And here's, here's, the, uh, here's my dad's right here. Proof, my dad's permission slip saying that I could do the podcast. Oh, shit. Down oh, no, he's, he's, put, he's showing it to me on the camera right now. I give my son, Ray yeah. J. Beep, uh, permission to do the podcast with Rem Dickman and the Rich Dickman group. So, yeah, there it is mm -hmm. in writing. Wow. There All it right. is. Ray, this thinking with your Dickman, this isn't done? No, nope. they, they didn't write a complete letter yet. Oh, you just asked I didn't, for I didn't transcribe it yet. I didn't cr transcribe the whole thing. Okay. All right. Uh, here we so go. So we'll come back to it. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to introduce this week's finalists for Dick of the Week. And here is our first nominee. You should probably be ready with this. Hello, Rich Dickman Show. Svensson here with another nomination for Dick of the Week. This week, we have another bad driver I'm nominating. This time... The driver, <laughs> fortunately, was not driving a black BMW. This time, the driver was a white BMW. So this is the situation that had what happened. Driving down a three-lane highway, there's full no. shoulders on either side of the highway. And traffic somehow, you know, gets backed up. What was the issue? A guy in a white BMW had a flat tire in the far right lane this the of the highway. Week? However, for some strange reason, he decided to It might to be. Take, is it? It is. It. Yeah. Shit. I, but still. I couldn't remember still. because because he um, he sent one so early. I couldn't remember if it was for the last show or this show. <laughs> yeah. So that's the same one from last week. But still, Svensson, why does the color of the BMW matter? Why why does it have to be black or white? Come this on, is man. embarrassing. Come I'm on. sorry, Ray. This is why- You, you know, know I would have made that comment last week, but I was literally wireless headphoned out. And I yeah. was like literally downstairs, like in oh, so my he listening to it while yeah. you and the Priory Society were listening. And I'm like, color, color, trying to yell from downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was actually what was happening. Oh. So it was a good. And so it's good you played that. It was a good. Uh, that was a throwback to episode 68. Download yeah. now. Check out, yeah, check out episode 68 if you haven't already. That's right. Add that download. Yeah, richdickman.com. Are you listening, advertisers? We got a whole 22 downloads. So boom. In your face. <laughs> Whoa, what? Yeah, that is more wow. than three times the number of regular yeah. downloads we get. Right. And I only downloaded twice as many times as normal. Yeah, so, me, me mean, too. Wow. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. sir. And then two of those were Eros Nisus. So, but goddamn, we did it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we made it, America. Yeah. We made it. <clears throat> Waiter shot dead by customer who waited too long for sandwich in France. Witnesses say from USA Today by Joshua Bote, August 19th, a waiter was shot to death in a restaurant just outside Paris by an impatient customer who lost his temper for having to wait for a sandwich, bystander said. The customer, who has not been identified, shot the waiter in the shoulder with a handgun after believing that the restaurant was taking too long to prepare his sandwich. The restaurant Mistral is in the Paris suburb of of Noisy Le Grand. <laughs> Noisy Le Grand. <laughs> the suburb is less than 10 miles east of Paris's city center. The waiter, 28, died on the scene. The eatery, which mainly serves burgers and sandwiches, opened in March. The gunman has not been found. Um, that sucks, wow. man. That sucks. Listen. If you're at a if you're at a restaurant and the service kind of sucks, just like get up and leave. <laughs> Maybe throw a couple bucks on the table for the trouble to get you a soda, and that's it. Just go. Or call in a complaint. Like you, you can call and just complain and be like, "Hey, man, you, you guys sucked." Yeah, uh, I don't really feel like coming back. But you, you don't gotta kill someone. I mean, holy shit! We've got um, we got some more news stories from uh, from Connecticut. 
here, Ray. This is this is good. Okay, here we go. We've had a lot of local news somehow. Or did we like what is this? Like we had the one from Roseville that was right right in my neck of the woods. Yeah. Now it's hey, Connecticut stuff. Hot drummer news, babe. Can you do me a favor? You got three minutes on the voicemail line. Can you call in like a three minute news bumper segment? And you know that way you you can get you on every week instead of having to coordinate with times and everything. And you give us some some news because I, I really like your style, HDNB. I like your style. Yeah, yeah. I like the way you deliver. I, I agree. That news. Yeah, you're, you're you're a great news person. I said person, professional because, news person. Yeah. yeah. I said person because I respect hot drummer news, babe. I'll go so far as to say professional news person, babe. Hey, oh, that's nice. I like it. I like it. All right, here we go. Woman. <laughs> Confronted over topless sunbathing, removes bathing suit bottom as well. According to the Westport police from Westport, Connecticut, a confrontation over topless sunbathing led to charges for a Norwalk woman. According to police, Westport police said on July 15th, around 1.30 p.m., officers were called to the Campo Beach for a report of an indecent exposure. The caller said she saw a woman on the beach remove the top portion of her bathing suit to tan. She thought this was inappropriate for a public beach and attempted to confront the woman about what she was doing. During the confrontation, the woman who had removed her top allegedly became belligerent and proceeded to remove the bottom portion of her bathing suit, exposing her buttocks. (laughs) The woman who complained to police had her child with her, who apparently witnessed the entire incident. Police said the complainant reported that in addition to her inappropriate behavior, this woman appeared to her to be under the influence of alcohol at the time of the interaction. Ray, I'm going to change uh, the Dick of the Week nomination on this story in particular to the person, the complainant, the person who called to okay, complain. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Because this lovely young lady was just bathing topless and this bitch had to get out there and be like, yo, what are you doing? Like, mind your own business. Why would you confront somebody in public these days? Everybody has a gun or everybody's under the influence of drugs or alcohol. What are you fucking doing? Especially bringing your kid with you. You dumb asshole. Well, it's kind of the same thing as the last one. Like, you get up and you leave. Or, like, don't let everything that anyone... The other person's not doing anything. They're not, she's not shaking her boobs in your kid's face. She's, she's right? trying to get a tan. Yeah, she's kind of minding her own business. Yeah. Now, it doesn't... I mean, it's a little indecent exposure. I understand that. You don't necessarily want... Like, a guy whipping his junk out is... That's, that's indecent. You know, it's a little too much, yeah. But, like, a lady... Dude, you know how many... God, you know how many times I've heard the word nipple in the last week? Listen. Lactation consultants, doctors, like nipple, nipple, Ray. nipple, nipple, nipple. Ray. Like, I'm, I'm deaf to it now. Why is it okay for men to go topless, but women can't go topless? That's bullshit, right? That's bullshit. I just, agree. Just boobs. Boom. One yep. sex has smaller boobs than the other. And that's it. That's yeah. the only difference. All right. Now, you know, bottomless, yeah. and- bottomless is a different story. I don't want to see a bunch of, a bunch of dicks walking around and some some chicks don't know how to take care down there that rhymes so um keep the bottoms on but the tops free the titty you know what i'm saying free free it mm-hmm. free it yeah i mean that's it does it really matter it's not, boobs aren't weird like everyone's got them you just they're different everyone's Ray. got a little little uh spit on them it's Ray, fine. L- little spit on them right lift your shirt up i want to see yours do you, you want to see mine? Yeah, I actually do. <laughs> oh, you did it. <laughs> I'll do whatever. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> okay, our next story. Another local story from the Connecticut Post. Police actually, say, hold on. God damn. Hold on. Actually, so speaking of my dad in flashing, <laughs> one time we went on a ride at, at California Adventure in, uh, in Disneyland, California Adventure. I think it was that one. Yeah. And we did that. We actually flashed the camera because we went on the ride a couple of times with the two of us. We flashed the camera. They they fucking banned that one. They didn't they didn't show it when you get off the ride and you look at the pictures at the end. They Dude. removed it. They wouldn't even show it. Disney Isn't that sucks, hilarious? man. I was at yeah, we, we I was so down at, the, at, the, at Universal Studios and uh, not Universal. Um, uh, what's what's uh, shit? Um, Hollywood Studios, whatever the fuck it's called down Universal Studios. No, it wasn't. It was the Disney version of it in their Hollywood Park. Um, where where the Star Tours ride is, <clears throat> fuck it was oh, yeah, a Disney, yeah, yeah 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 it was a Disney park but They've it was renamed it, it all now 
Yeah, it, it's not Universal. It was Disney Parks. So I was down there, and they had the Aerosmith Rock and Roll Express, which was an indoor roller coaster. And you started stationary, and you went to 60 miles an hour in like three seconds. And that's when they took the picture. It was like in the middle of that acceleration. And I was going on for a second time, and I knew what was about to happen. So I had my middle fingers up. I was like, be like, yeah, fuck you, rock and roll, baby, right? And my middle fingers up in the air. And then the attendant came over to me and said, sir. And I'm like, yes, sir. And he said, uh, you can't do that. And I said, oh. <laughs> okay. And I put my fingers away and I wasn't able to get my awesome rock and roll picture. Yeah. It's Fuck. ridiculous. Yeah. All right. I mean, you're talking rock and roll. Well, that's the thing. Like, okay. What kind of stuff, like how many things in an Aerosmith concert do you think are much worse than seeing a middle finger? Uh, probably about everything. Everything yeah. there. Yeah, like a Literally bunch of everything. Bunch of 70 year old dudes rocking out. That's disgusting. You know how many illegal drugs are there and people having sex and like just, oh my God. And, but, yeah. oh, uh, 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 but this is an Aerosmith Disney thing, right? Yeah. Whatever yeah. it is. No like, middle fingers. On. That's bad. And that's what we were at, like, we're at Disneyland. I get it. It's family fucking. But like, we, it's literally two guys showing their, we, I don't even know. Like, they have the little, uh, the harnesses that go over you, like the, the drop down things. Two guys the showing their guy titties. Yep. So you can't even actually show them. Like, you can't even see anything. You just kind of lift our shirts, and we thought it was hilarious, and we got off the ride thinking, this is going to be awesome. And then, nope, blacked out screens right there. Fuck Disney. Ugh. Okay. A, you ready? Can I move on now? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, all let's right. do it. Yeah. From the Connecticut Post, thank you, HDNB, for the tip. Police a pair, uh, say a pair of 80... Oh, fuck. I'm getting... It's an hour in. I'm eating drunk. Police say mm-hmm. a pair of 80-somethings among six caught engaged in sexual activity in Fairfield Woods from Fairfield, Connecticut. Police arrested six people, including a pair of people in their 80s, last week after getting reports of lewd and sexual activity in the Grace Richardson open space area at the intersection of Conger Street and Morehouse Highway. According to police, the department received several complaints of inappropriate behavior during the week of August 12th. The Grace Richardson parcel is an 87-acre piece of land that was part of a major acquisition by the town, blah, blah, blah. Fairfield Police Quality of Life unit was assigned to investigate. They conducted surveillance on August 9th around the open space. Several violations were observed. Charge of breach of peace, breach of peace and public indecency. Uh, they don't really say what they were doing. Um, oh, an internet search revealed that the park has been advertised on at least one city hookup guide site as a meetup spot, along with other Fairfield locations, including the Jefferson Street commuter lot and McDonald's at the Interstate 95 Service Plaza. I know where that is. Police are continuing to monitor the locations and internet advertising. So, hey, if you want to get your dick sucked, go to the woods. <laughs> uh, you don't even have to go to an Asian massage parlor and yeah. front and possibly spend a bunch of extra money. You can just so go to the woods. Who's just the dick here? The I mean, the dick here isn't the people trying to get it on in the woods. It's, ba- it's the police, right? Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. All right. All right. That rem- <laughs> you ever, you was- ever, um, you ever lewdly get your dick sucked in the woods, right? By some stranger? I was about to say, I was actually doing something on Tinder a couple weeks ago where this, I was, this guy was from Roseville again, Roseville. Uh, and there, I, this is weird because Fairfield, there's a fair, Fairfield not that far from, and I drove through it today. Um, uh, so we, we share a fair, Fairfield, uh, location. Wow, city, we should be friends. Town. We have so much in common. When, yeah. when I was on my grinder adventure trying to find a, a date for a movie, <laughs> um, <laughs> some dudes were offering to meet in the woods. We have a lot of woods around here. And, and, and Did they really? Dick, yeah. Suck my dick in the woods. And I'm like, <laughs> oh my God. You know, that's tempting, but I don't know, man, because like, I don't want to get hacked up with a machete in the woods. I don't really want, yeah, yeah that's not where I want to die. Yeah. That's not where I want to go. So, well, I was on Tinder talking to this guy from Roseville and I was like, oh, I was like, I know Roseville. And then somehow we started on the subject of like places we've had sex and I was being honest and I'm assuming he was too, but I never said anything about that. I was with a girl, but we ended up apparently having both had sex at different times in the same area. By the United Artists Theaters in the woods out behind the parking lot. Um, obviously it's me at the time with my girlfriend and he, uh, who knows when it was, but it was a pretty, pretty interesting little, uh, little, uh, tidbit that came up there. 
Uh, so I, I have uh, been in the woods before having, having sex. We had a uh, pre movie sex. Jesus, time. Ray. Humble brag. My God. It was, uh, that was, she was, she was hot. That was a good, good time. Yeah. <laughs> well, Look at you. I won't get, I won't get too far into that one. All right. Whatever. <laughs> Um, let's see here. I got, I got two more from HDNB, but we already have four stories already. So I'm going to say this, um, hot drummer news, babe. I, I appreciate you sending in these two stories. We're going to save them for next week because I have four stories here already. All right. Ray, are you thinking about who, uh, who is the dick of the week this week? I, I mean, I think of the person killing a French waiter. That's, that's the first one that comes to yeah, mind. Yeah. I want to kind of talk you into the woman who, uh, who got mad at the top of sunbather. Like, I agree, but she didn't kill the top of the sunbather. Yeah. Oh, you know what? But we also had the Svensson audio that was from last week. So we can nominate Svensson for not submitting a dick of the week. Yeah. You know, that's, that's up there too. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to play the bumper. I got, I got a little thinking to do here. After much deliberation, the incredibly handsome expert judges have come to the consensus that this week's dick of the week award goes to. You know, it's, Svensson's for being a vehicle racist. Yeah, you got the vehicle racism for, from Svensson and not sending in one this week. I mean, that's and that's really piling. But I, you know, my, my, I want to call trouble. Svensson Dick of the Week, but he'll just get mad at us and like nominate us for Dick of the Week at the end, and I don't want to do that. Oh, you're right. Yeah, you're right. but I mean, really, Svensson. I mean, shit. I mean, you sent you sent last week's like a week early, and you didn't send one this week, and, you, you, and I blame you for me playing it again this week because I got confused. All right, so I mean, you're you're, mm-hmm. you're up there, Svensson. You're like you're really up there, um, <laughs> close. Yeah, quick nomination goes out to my father for bringing me like all this liquor that I'm drinking, and um, it's an hour into the show, and I'm pretty fucking hammered right now, so I'm sorry. Um, but I think Ray, I think I got to go with the woman who was complaining about the topless sunbather. I mean, she put she put a beautiful pair of breasts in danger, and she put her her child in danger, and she put a lot of people in danger by. Instead of just ignoring something that was harmless. As much as I don't agree with that, you're, if you feel that strongly about it, then you can swing my vote over to that and we will make her the dick of the week. Why don't you agree with it though? No, I'm curious. Cause I, I, cause I still think that killing a waiter is worse. Yeah, but I mean, you don't know what kind of dickhead the waiter was to begin with. It's not like you just, you know, you don't get shot because you're just a nice guy, right? You get shot because you did something stupid. You know whether would you tried. It be worse if the waiter was drunk and like, like being a shitty waiter. It would make more drunk, sense. And shitty waiter. You know, there, there's nothing in the story that says because listen, Ray, we have this thing in our society, in our world, is that when you die, you get glorified as some sort of saint. Like you did all these awesome things. Like even when you're a criminal, we think about all the good times that you had while you were alive. Right? <laughs> we don't know that this French waiter wasn't being a total dickhead to this goddamn customer. He could have been like, uh, oh, bonjour, monsieur, uh, comment ça va, comment ça va, and like not answer any of his questions, pretending to speak French. I wish I knew how to say a lot more in French right now. <laughs> but we don't know that he wasn't menage a dick. Toi. Yeah, menage et toi, rendezvous, hey, 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 oui, oui, oui. <laughs> Yeah, we don't know that this this waiter wasn't like, uh, okay. listen, oh, you okay. weird immigrant, I'm going to get to you later. Like, we don't know any of that. All right, this guy might have deserved it. I'm not, nobody deserves it, but this guy might have deserved it. That's why I want to go with the safer choice of the stupid woman who could have just fucking minded her own business and let the woman, you know, tan the titties. Okay, yeah, I see. I, I I'm fine with that then. Are you sure? sure? Like I said, if you that strongly agree, then yeah. then we can we can make it happen. I wish politics was like this, where I could just strongly believe in something and people would agree with me. Well, but I mean, what are we really gonna like fight over? Which I mean, they're both terrible fucking people. Yeah, that's but, true. I mean, okay. when it comes down to it, like I agree, like that person's a fucking yeah. they they're they're all horrible people. But but we can we can agree to it. So, yeah. sort of agree to disagree. You know, Ray, but, let me tell you something, you know? Ray. Is that I used to work down at the beach, all right? I used to, I was at the beach every single day doing my job, all right? And that must have been a good gig. It it was were a you, good gig. Were you tan? Oh, like nice I, and tan then? I was very tan and I had amazing, amazing calves. Uh, but. And you probably got to see a bunch of, whoops, drop something there. Probably got to like see a bunch of like nice looking ladies and stuff, right? I, I absolutely did. It was a great job, oh, Ray. It was great. And I'm so sorry gig. that I decided I wanted to do something more with my life. Uh, but uh, the people who come to the beach Just during the different. summer, they're not your normal 
clients. They're not normal people during, <laughs> from the town. Yeah. Okay. They're, they're visitors from other places, especially here in Connecticut. We have a lot of people who come to the shoreline, uh, from Massachusetts and New Hampshire, or they come up from like Carolina or Florida for some reason. Um, and they're just assholes. They don't know how to acclimate and integrate into our Connecticut society. They still do their own stupid shit. Uh, so. So the people who come to live at the beach for the summer, they're fucking assholes, Ray. And they do stuff like this. I bet you I would be willing to bet if we got some more information. Hey, Hot Drummer News Babe, can you get more information on this story? Because I want I, I would be willing to bet that the woman who complained about the titties, that she was not from Connecticut. She was not from Connecticut. Hmm. If you had to guess what state do you think she was actually from? She's probably from Florida, like fucking Florida or like northern Massachusetts or some shit. She definitely wasn't around here, though. And I'm I'm really sorry. It, I like I'm getting self conscious. I'm getting like like ranty and and weird. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Ray. <laughs> no, no, no. So, but that's what, that was going to be my next question: is if she was okay. So you said so if it's not from that area and not Florida, because Florida it seems almost too obvious. Like to me, like I mean, I'm not a I'm not from the East Coast, so it's hard for me to know exactly how that kind of works out. But I wonder what, if you had to guess not Florida, <laughs> what other state would it be? Okay, so this was down in Westport. Okay. So Westport has money. Let's analyze lot, this. Yeah, there's money in Westport. So she's probably from New York City. If she's not Florida, she's oh, okay. New York City. Yeah. I can see that. Okay. Yep. That that I can justify that in my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And isn't pretty much everyone from New York a dick of the week? Except Chris Oh well, yeah, actually, actually I could nominate Chris O'Sea every week for he, Dick of the Week. Yeah. yeah. I love the guy. Yeah, fuck New York. I love New York. Well, fuck New York. I'm supposed to go back next Saturday, Ray, um, but I haven't, I haven't really cleared it with anybody yet. I got to get that shit together. All right. we, we have a New York office, and it is pretty funny because some of the stories you hear are just hysterical. Like we we've got one guy who absolutely is like a Tinder. I mean, he runs through Tinder kind of guy, and then we have. A guy we sent over there that's married and co- basically it's complete opposite. And he, the, the, the stories that you hear that could be the same exact scenario, they could be next to each other. And the story that they come back are amazing. It just, New York is incredible. It's incredible. The contrast is, is, it's fantastic. Ray, I want to say, um, I'm looking at our extra notes here for things to talk about when we have more time to kill. Yes. And I clicked on Inside of the Mouse Faithfuls. I, yes. And I got to tell you something. Uh, the chick and this link, she looks like somebody I know, and it's making me super uncomfortable because the way the way it popped up on my Is browser. Is it the person that I think that you're thinking about? Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. Yes. I thought the same thing. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and the pictures are like so blown up that it's like looking at this person in real life. Oh, what the fuck? It is. Yeah. It was yeah. not like that on my phone. And I found is, it on my phone. This yeah. is terrible. I got a facial on the inside of my mouth and the results were incredible. It's called an oral cream pie. It's not a facial on the inside of your mouth. <laughs> stupid idiot. What is, what is this, Ray? Wow. How does Pop Sugar have such a shitty fucking – like is it maybe, – maybe it took the link – I hate looking at phone? this. I hate looking at this chick. I don't know why you would do this to me. Well, did you did you go to like the last picture that she posted? Have you seen that picture? Yeah. And she looks like halfway decent right it's, there. Right? It's a completely different person. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, it doesn't matter. Okay. So this article is about this lady that works for Pop Sugar. Apparently, she looks um, like she's sixteen. <clears throat> Oh wait! Oh yeah, wait! So August eleventh, twenty nineteen. Tori, Crowder. this came across like on um, what was it? So, so a couple oh. things. I oh, get, I just randomly <laughs> when I open up my Opera because I use Opera as my web browser. When I open that up in like stealth mode or whatever you want to call it, <laughs> it actually gives me four hot, uh, like recent items that people it's like search terms that people search for. And some of them are pretty funny. So I might have got this from that, which means it was actually trending at some point. Or I get it from Twitter when I'm just on Twitter trying to like check out whatever you're doing and people are, you know, just like the the main stuff on Twitter. And it just comes across my timeline. So, but this popped up and I was like, what the fuck? A facial on the inside of my mouth? That's not a facial. That's a mouth, mouth shul or something. 
who I don't know what you call it. So I was like, this sounds really fucking dumb. So anyway, I, I start reading the article. It starts out. She looks super oily faced, red all over her face, close up pictures. Then it shows her getting some sort of like somebody with gloved fingers inside of her mouth, I don't, massaging her mouth or face or something like that. Yeah. Her describing the experience. And then at the very end, she's like, oh, look, it improved everything. And then there's a picture of her with a shitload of makeup on and looks pretty hot. And you're like, well, fucking hold on a second here. You took a bunch of shitty pictures, said, here I am getting some mouth facial. (laughs) And then you go to the end and take like your, yeah, get like a professional, (laughs) like your prom pictures. And then you're like, it did wonders for me. (laughs) Like, What the fuck is this? I just thought it was hysterical when I got to the end. So I thought you'd like that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, the pictures are, you know, the close-up pictures are terrible. They're very, very shiny. Um, there's acne, right? And not that there's anything wrong with that. Like, I, I get a pimple every now and then. I'm not a great looking human being. I got a lot of marks and shit on my face, right? Cause I'm old. Dude, I'm no 30, one's perfect. I'm yeah. 38. Yeah. Nobody's perfect. And, and dude, I was what, thinking about that the other day, right? I was like, Hey, if I could change one or two things about myself, what would it be? And I was like, uh, this and that. And I was like, and then what would I change? Because I would then look for two more things to change and then two more things to change and yeah. two, like no one's perfect. You're fine the way I mean, you are. I would like, like don't, don't I would like a perfect. chin. You know, I would like a chin. That's what I want. That's all I want in my life is a chin, but I don't have one. So what are you going to do? Um, but this, 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 this young lady, yeah, you, she, she, these, these aren't the most appealing pictures, but Ray, if I took a picture of your face up close like this, and then I took a picture of your face from far away, you'd look amazing in comparison. So <laughs> wait, is that a compliment or? Yeah, no, you're, you're a good looking guy. I'm sorry, you're a good looking guy. Like I, t- I totally fuck you if I was, if, if we were a gay couple. So. Even if we weren't, I totally would. So, God well, you damn. never responded to my my butthole pictures on Grinder, dude. Oh, you know, there's only one butthole. You you seen them all, man. You seen them all. <laughs> but like, I, I would like more ladies to know that you know what? I don't I don't need to see you all made up and and done, right? I just need to see you. I need to see the brightness in your eyes and the smile that you give me. That's all I need to see your beauty. I don't need a whole bunch of makeup. I don't need uh you know a, a whole bunch of things that you're you're not. I just need you to be you. I need you to be fucking cool. That's it. Like you know, just be cool and be be sweet and kind and caring and you know yeah you know, big bright eyes and a beautiful smile. I don't need a bunch of makeup, man. So I don't know what this chick is trying to say. I don't know what an inside of the mouth facial is. I mean, I, I know what an inside of the mouth facial is. <laughs> I don't know what she's she's talking about with inside of the mouth facial. The foreign connoisseur knows what the inside of the mouth facial is. I can yeah. tell you about all the inside of the mouth facials that I've seen. And again, they're not called inside of the mouth facials, but <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say, Terry Crowther, I know you're probably listening to this since we since we uh, more than three timed our she's audience. A big fan. She's a big fan she's of the show. Fan. Yeah. Um, you know, you're a very, very pretty young lady. You're not my type. You're a little too small. You're a little too skinny, right? But you can't I'm, even tell. You can only see your face. I'm sure someone like Ray really appreciates you. So there you go. Yeah, I like the smaller ones. They're cute. You know, Ray, go yeah. fuck yourself and grow up, you idiot. You're so stupid. Oh my god. Hey, so do you want to hear about uh, Iron Eagle? <laughs> yeah, Iron Finally. Eagle. Yeah, tell me about, about Iron, Dude, Iron Eagle. Dude, it was the best fucking movie I've ever seen. Iron Eagle. Okay, okay so, well, hold, so, set it up. What is Iron Eagle? So it was a, a movie from like maybe like the early 80s, something like that. And it's about basically – it's every fucking stereotype from the 80s. There's some sort of it, – it starts out with uh, like three or four pilots in these F-16s or whatever they are flying near the border and all of a sudden these big jets come out of nowhere and shoot them all down and they capture one of the pilots it's in the middle east and you have your stereotypical uh bad guy who's wearing the middle eastern garb like like he looks like saddam hussein essentially and he's you know yells at everyone and demands a bunch of stuff and essentially what happens is there's a bunch of like the the guy who's captured his kid and his friends hey, go on a mission to rescue him. What if I played the Iron Eagle trailer? 
Ooh, do it. Do yeah. it. Oh, yes, do it. It's, it's like pure 80s He's bliss. He's 18 years old. Raised on an airbase. Are you out of your mind? Oh, this is the beginning Born of Star Trek. The new movie. Living yeah. for the day he'll earn his wings. Suddenly, just when life was going great. Doug, it's your dad. He's been shot down. What? Of course he was. <laughs> <laughs> you need special effects? Colonel, will you please just tell me what's going on? Your what? country has been warned time and time again. Because they claim a 200 mile in. <laughs> we only recognize 12. So when are they going in? Reparation is our due. Don't lie to me. Three days. In three days, they're going to hang me. When the Pentagon yes. is helpless. We're doing all we can. And Washington's <laughs> hands are tied. We make the laws in this country. There's only one thing <laughs> See, to do. See, stereotypical and he'll bad do guy. It with one of the toughest fighter pilots who ever lived, retired Lewis Colonel Jr. Tappy Sinclair. Yes, and your dad it's so amazing. A lot about people's dignity. That's the last kind of person in the world I want to see locked up in some oh, stinking cage somewhere. Oh, he kicks my ass. You think with yes. the right plan? Oh, he's, he's got a cut-off yeah. sweatshirt. Probably. He's got a, he's got a wife beater and a cut-off sweatshirt. I'm telling you right now, oh. I bet you can get a plane. Bingo. Thank We're in. Are you wide enough to get me a couple of pilots, too? I've got three times as many hours on that simulator <laughs> as most pilots flying falcons on this base right now. What? I'll <laughs> test you out of some live <laughs> yeah. He may know how to fly. Now he must learn how to fight. What you... <laughs> 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 Yeah. They do the thing and we won't tell them to sit tight and wait. Get up from either. here on out. How are you supposed to believe, man? Waiting time is over. Okay. Waiting time hey. is over. They're going in against the clock. Oh, now they got serious. Yes. In a yes. pair of borrowed F-16. The sound effects. Do you, do you. And the 80s music. <laughs> so good. Now just worry about the pre-makes that got up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 shit. The trailer is the whole movie. It is. It is. Gossa Jr., oh, shit. Jason Gedrick, Iron Eagle. Oh, my God. Okay, it's on Amazon. If you have Amazon Prime, you can watch it. It's Holy on fuck. Too. If you. Is it? Oh, my God. Please, if you have the time to watch it and you love anything 80s, you have to. Okay, so it literally, the whole time that this kid is flying, his thing is he has to put in his headphones because he's got like a little Walkman thing and he has to listen to 80s music. And and like Lou Gossett is like, no, you you can't do that. It's going to mess you up. And then at some point they go through this training run and he misses all the targets. And then he's like, I'm doing it. My, the kid's like, I'm doing it my way. So he puts the headphones back on, he listens to the music and hits every target. And like the special effects are absolutely horrible. They go through this like refueling thing, like situation where – you can tell these are absolutely model planes. Like I had to pause it, go back and show my wife and kids because it was so bad. Like they're they're like, what the fuck is dad doing? Like he's laughing his ass off at this movie. Like what do you do? And I'm like, God, come here, come here, look at this, look at this. It's model airplanes and they're refueling. The whole it's like just 80s galore. All everything. Right. Ray. Oh my god. I I just YouTubed Iron Eagle soundtrack, and I've got Iron yes. Eagle Road of the Gypsy ready yes. to go. Okay. Do you want to be Louis Gossett Jr. or do you want to be the other guy? Um, you be. Oh my God! Hold on. What's Stella? Nothing. Nothing. Oh, okay. You just need puppy. Okay. (laughs) Just interject right in the middle. Um, do you want to be? So Luke Gossett's basically saying you're not going to do it, and the kid being like. I can do it. Which one? You want to be the go-getter or the downer? I'm going to be the downer. Okay. All right. All right. Let's do it. What the fuck is this? And, uh, we're really excited about it. We're going to try. I don't. To I don't want to. One more song to complete the album. <laughs> What's the title? Uh, Road of the Gypsy. Kid, I don't know that you can do this. All right, we've been training for years, kid. This isn't for you. You need to go home. You need to take care of your mom. I don't care. My dad. My I need, I'm gonna say my dad. No Kid, one's doing anything. The your government dad was the sucks. best pilot I ever seen. Best pilot this base has ever seen. You're not your dad. How many times have you flown in that in that Iron Eagle? I've never flown. A pl- I've I've got thousands of hours in the simulator. More than anyone. I, I'm ready. I'm ready. You don't have what it takes. Okay. You don't have what it takes. We spent years in the simulator. 
flying these things, getting ready for combat against these bad guys of unknown descent. You're not ready, kids. You, you need you need to put your father's memory aside. You need to take care of your mom and your little brother, Timmy. You got to go home. But I have everything I need. I love my dad, and I've I've tested in the simulator, and that's all I need. That's and I have '80s music. That's all I need. I'll Tim, be able to fly down. Your dad, to... That's gonna get you killed. No. Okay. Here's my plan. I'm gonna fly into the heart of the enemy territory by myself. Hopefully, you'll come with me. I'm gonna blow up everything in the whole in the whole country. Every air defense. Land on the ground. Have my dad run and jump in the plane and take off, and we're good to go. Like, I got it all planned out. Kid, kid, you don't understand. Our computers are programmed by Atari. Have you ever even played Atari before? You have your headphones in all the time. I don't think you've ever played Atari. No, I've never played Atari because I have too many hours logged in the simulator. I swear I've been flying the plane, not jerking off about that girl down the street, Stephanie. Nope. It's Who's literally just fly this plane. Kid, you, you're freaking me out here. I don't. Listen, I'm down I pilots. I only fly okay? this plane. I only have 10 pilots plus myself, which makes 11. I need 12. You're making a convincing argument here, despite my despite my, my negativity. Are you ready to fly Wait, this my, thing? My plan only calls for two of us to do this mission. That's all we need to, to take out the entire country's defenses. Okay. Okay. We just need the all two right. of us. I understand. I'll send the other 10 pilots out in front of us, and they'll get shot down, and hopefully the bad guys will use up all their bullets that we can we can, we can fly through, actually. So I mean, that's pretty good. No, see, this is the thing. This is the thing. I'm a kid, and I'm way fucking smarter than any of you adults, and I have five friends that are my age. They're way smarter than any of the other adults. So one friend is going to be able to f- handle the radar as we trick his dad into going to go get a Coke. We're going to outsmart uh, this other kid, the kid's dad, who's the general, so we can actually uh, schedule a refueling. And then literally just the two of us, we're going to fly in there. Just the two of us. That's all we need. We don't Your even need people moving, to soak bullets. And I can't hear a word you're saying because in the, in, in the year 2019, this dude Rem doesn't know how to set up any of his shit. So it's going to be awesome when I listen back to this and I hear your plan. But I'm in for it, man. Let's fucking do this. <laughs> let's go. Let's go yes, rescue that's the all memory we need. of your dead father and let's go kill some guys. He's not even guy. dead. We're going to save him. We're going to just the two of us. We're going to fly in there into enemy territory. We're going to we're going to save my dad. Just the two of us in these multi-million dollar jets. All right. Make sure you bring a camera and point it at your at your at your face and say a bunch of words so they can line up your lips to the music <laughs> video that will play at the end of this. Yes. Yes, that sounds like a really good idea. I don't know why you're saying that, but it sounds like a really good idea. You finally right. have a good idea, old, old right. man. Iron Eagle on three. One, two, three. Iron Eagle. Iron Eagle. <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> Dude, so this is what, literally, you went over like some of the, the massive tropes that happened in the movie. At one point, Lou Gossett was literally like, kid, you're not ready. The night before the mission, he's like, you're not ready. You ain't shit. You're done and then literally, <laughs> I know, I know. Gosh, yeah. <laughs> Hold on, Stella, what do you want to say, baby? Can you say hi? Can you say hi? No? What do you need, baby? Okay, okay. Okay, go ahead. Oh my god. Oh, the joys of podcasting. Uh, <laughs> Alright, I love you, baby cutie. Bye bye, she said. See you long time, she said. See you long time. So I don't know what that means. But no, he literally the night before the mission, they go through this whole thing, right? <laughs> they they the kids like take over the base, plan all this shit, like trick the adults into leaving the stations for a while, like set up everything, right? And the night before the mission, Lou Goss is like, kid, you ain't shit. You ain't ready for this. And then, and then he's like, uh, okay, we'll do it anyway. <laughs> and then gives him this tape, gives him this tape that as he's flying, like Lou Goss, like is shot down and presumably dies and had this tape ready for when he dies to like encourage the kid. And I'm like, wait. Why the fuck are you waiting until in the mission to tell him, like, to give him encouragement? You couldn't have done that while you were alive, like, the night before. You're going to tell him he's not worth it. He can't do it. But then give him a tape, like, a couple hours later. 
in the mission and tell him like do it like none of it makes sense anyway the whole thing's amazing one of my favorite parts is the they get there they're bombing the, the place he like blows this uh big starts a big fire on the runway the kid does he lands his plane so that his dad can jump in the the enemy has a sniper that shoots his dad and he's trying to get to the airplane and there's a big fire right in the middle of the runway and the, the fucking commander on the other side says send me two brave men if there are any of you left and they fucking like th- like start driving jeeps through this flames and fucking rolling over and everything exploding it's just insane it's insane it's such a good movie you have to watch it it's just it's pure 80s bliss from start to finish it's a you have to watch it kind of sounds like a michael bay transformers movie almost that's awesome man it's awesome. That's it. Probably influenced Michael Bay. I swear to God, if yeah. he, if you talk to Michael Bay, he would probably say like Iron Eagle was one of his greatest influences. All right, all right, Ray. Well, thank you very much for your Iron Eagle review. I certainly will not check that out anytime soon. But it was fun to role play with the music of Iron Eagle. So thank you. I, oh, absolutely. I appreciate your contributions to the show, buddy. <laughs> I appreciate you. Yeah, you goddamn right you do. Oh. You, you goddamn so right you do. So now that we're we're winding down. Don't forget, brilliant by Shine Down. Oh yeah, no, I did it already. Oh, you did get it. Okay, you got that whole part in. Okay, yeah. I liked how you said Shine Down and, and substituted Shine Down instead of Yanni when you were talking about the uh, Google Home. Yeah, like, what music you listen to? <laughs> You're absolutely right. <laughs> no, I've been on a Shine Down kick uh, this week. Like I, um, I'm playing my Google Play music in my car, and I'm like, uh, you know, shine down. Let's let's do it. Let's do this shit. Like fly from the inside. Nice. Like that that opened up my my the hole in my heart, and it sealed it and made it whole again. Something like that. I really like that song. But a lot of the newest stuff is good too. Like you know, we were talking about the segment. I think we're gonna do this next week. But inspirational quotes that we got from music songs, right? Like here, Ray. Mm-hmm. Who or what are your monsters? That's right. Wait, that's right. What am I, I supposed to do with that? It's a song by Shinedown called Monsters. And um, hold on, oh, I okay. forgot what the I lyrics are because I'm drunk. Um, so you have to wait a second and I have to pull it up here. <laughs> monsters, Shinedown, lyrics. Um, yeah, because my monsters are real and they're trained how to kill and there's no coming back and they just laughed at how I feel. And these monsters, they can fight and they'll never say die and there's no going back and back and trapped and I'll never heal because my monsters are real. That's mm-hmm. deep. Yeah, dude. That's like all those monsters that we fight every day. We all have monsters, right? And what do you do with them? What do you do with your monsters? I don't know. It's, it's like almost as deep as I kissed a girl and I liked it. Dude. I was listening to um, Triple T 101 last night. Not last night. Yeah, last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was I was supposed to write my wrestling article the other night, and instead I was trying <laughs> – I was sending a link to a friend of mine to listen to Triple T 101, my 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 own Jules Bot special. And um, I realized, man, I was – like I wrote all those bits. You know, a lot of them were written – co-written with, you know, John and Ben or even Marcone, and we wrote a lot of things together. But uh, – except the one – the Achievatron one that Roe did, he did it by himself. Uh, but uh, I was a, I was a brilliant bit writer and a great voice actor, right? Great, great voice actor. Yep. I think I think we should stop. I'm intentionally being quiet. Why are you being quiet, you that, dick? That was, mean. that was mean. That was mean. I know. What the fuck is wrong with you? Because I've already told you. Like, I liked all that stuff. I just want well, people to I, tell me I, that I I'm good, Ray, you dick. And you're just like, oh, I'm, I'm being quiet because fuck you, I Ray. know. I know. I was, try- yeah. I was trying to let it simmer for a minute and see what you would do. Hey, no, Ray, let me ask I, you. I knew you, you were fishing for a comment there or a compliment there. Oh, no. Let me ask you. Hey, I want to welcome back to the podcast – uh, Disney Girl eighty five on Twitter. She was a fan of mine oh. from Torn Think Tank, and she's yeah, back listening yeah. to the Rich Dickman show. She likes uh, listening to a show from a, a man's perspective because you know what? You know we're being marginalized as men. Our experiences don't matter as much. So thank you, um, Disney Girl eighty five, for listening once again. Tell your friends, hey, if you're out there playing a WoW Classic or wow battle of azeroth or whatever it is you're playing and somebody says hey you remember that awesome show you used to listen to torn thing they just go and tell them, hey 
you know, Rem from Torn Think Tank, he's doing an awesome show. It's called The Rich Dickman Show. And you can find him online at richdickman.com and all of your podcast apps. And if you like the show, if you're liking what you hear and you're having a good time, maybe leave him a review. Rating and review, a five-star rating would be great. But hey, listen, if you don't like the show, leave us a one-star rating. You know, I'd like to see them all. And review us because that <laughs> stuff, that certainly helps. That certainly helps. And we do appreciate it. So thank you very much. Again, that's richdickman.com. You can find us on Twitter at Rich Dickman Show. You can email the show, Rich Dickman Show at gmail.com. You can call the Dickman line, 860-316-4776. We certainly would love to hear from you. Voicemails are so much fun. You can find me on Twitter. I am at Rem Dickman. You can find us on YouTube as well. These episodes every week get uploaded to YouTube. And um, listen, I have some ideas for YouTube. And maybe within the next few weeks, they'll start hitting the actual... YouTube airwaves. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe not. You know, I don't want to get everybody all excited for something that may not happen, but I need my team. I need my team together. Follow producer Ryan on Twitter at Ryan TRDS and follow uh, Randy. That's right, Randy at Sir Zero with an E. Thank you, Randy and Umaroni for being Patreons. Patrons? Patrons. There it is. Patreon.com slash Rich Dickman. I think we're going to be updating that, right? Again, business meeting sometime this week. And go ahead and yes. follow my mother at Rem underscore Mama. She just got back from Italy. I just spent seven hours in the road going up to pick them up and bring them back. And they came over and brought me gifts from Italy. I got Italian Nutella, Ray. I got actual Italian Nutella and a bunch of little like biscuit sandwich cakes that I've been looking for uh, since 2017 when I was last there. <laughs> and uh, I said what I am. That's right. Okay. Anybody else? No. And Ray, how do we find you, buddy? Um, at Jules Winfeld on Twitter. <clears throat> if you would like to follow me on Twitch, which I had a request for this, twitch.tv slash Jules Winfeld, J-U-L-E-S-W-I-N-F-E-L-D. Hopefully you- that was slow enough for you. Uh, but yeah, get on there every once in a while. Uh, when we actually stream the show, it's twitch.tv slash, what is it, Rich Dickman Show? Yes. No. Yes, yeah, I, just, yeah. I just need to get. I just need to get pretty. I just need to get pretty for it. Yeah, we just got to figure it out. Um, and uh, we have a new slogan, which is uh, the Rich Dickman Show. Bring it back, manly. <laughs> Something like that. What, Ray? <laughs> Fuck you, Ray. You gotta have that, that shit ready to go. What? Like I have to have it ready to go. Yeah, you just like you just made that up. You didn't even run that did. by I me. I just make it up. Like I appreciate you. Um, I appreciate the improv of it all. Right, but like this is like the Rich Sigma show. Like I own the IP, right? I stand to make and lose <laughs> lots yes. of money here. Yes. So if you're gonna go ahead and brand shit, you yes. need to run that by me before I sue your ass. Okay. So the Rich Sigma show, where this new slogan may be bringing back the man. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> That's much better. Thank you very much. Up for up for vote, <laughs> depending on ah, <laughs> depending on how our business meeting goes. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Good night. See ya. Fucking fucking Ray just like making shit up. I appreciate appreciate the effort and I appreciate. Hey, that was because you were talking about the the person liking the male perspective. Disney girl ninety five. Eighty five, motherfucker. Eighty five. That's right. You're right. What you got to know about me is that I have a pop filter in front of my microphone. And I've got my nose pressed up right into it, and I'm talking on the microphone, and I feel, I feel like a radio guy. I feel very sexy. I can do that too. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> how, how's it? How's it going? Is it? Do I sound better? Should, should I do this too? Hey, hey. I feel like that yeah. that uh, Robin Williams bit where he's doing the eating pussy thing, where he puts his face in his elbow. Oh, you thing. gross! I feel like I'm doing that when I put my do. put my face right on my pop yeah. filter. Hey. Pop filter. This episode of the Rich Dickman Show, episode 69, has been brought to you by (laughs) Sonio di Sorrento Limoncello, all natural uh, limoncello from Sicily, the island off the coast of Italy. If you're looking at the boot, it's the soccer ball. That's right. Signo di Sorrento Limoncello for all your limoncello needs. Get you drunk very quickly, and it helps you uh, do a shitty podcast. So thank you very much. Thank you for your support tonight. Mm -hmm. (laughs) There you go. Brought to you by the number 69, most commonly misunderstood as a sexual reference, but really just the number before 70. That's right. It's just a number. Like, what the fuck is wrong with all of you? <laughs> <laughs> we need to start a campaign. Start a campaign for the number 69. Like, 
It's not a sexual reference. We're just the number after 68, the number before 70. Like, it's just a regular number. It's not sexual. Like, we we demand to be understood. The airwaves. Understood and given equal time. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Stop stereotyping the number 69. Stop it's, looking it's at my not tits. just a sexual reference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, All right. Stop it. Oh, 69. That's amazing.